Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video I'm going to be covering the Nextend Social Login plugin. Nextend Social Login is probably one of my favorite when it comes to login plugins, mostly because it's very well maintained and it has a very good user interface. For a while this actually used to be three separate plugins, one for Facebook, one for Google, and one for Twitter. Then the dev team fused them all into one plugin and have added new ways that you can log in in the premium version. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you the different platforms that come with the free version, the Google, Twitter, and Facebook ones, and I'm going to be discussing whether the paid version is really necessary for you. I also will be having individual videos on how to configure each of the three free logins for your website. So when you install it, you're going to get a new menu underneath Settings and Nextend Social Login. And then when you get it, you'll get a nice little standard admin panel of which most of the buttons will tell you to upgrade now and these three will have you click getting started. If you click getting started on one that you don't own, you'll be given some okay instructions that help you set up the app and then additional sub options for each one of them. So for Twitter, you have to insert your API keys for the functionality to work and then you can also choose settings such as setting a prefix for usernames on register so you could um, force a prefix for usernames when they sign up through Twitter to avoid duplicates and to avoid other sign-in issues. Typically just putting something like Twitter dash the, as a prefix that's totally acceptable. Or you can do a fallback username prefix on register which is used when there is a username that is either invalid or it's not stored so that way the user's username has a prefix for it and you can just insert it here. Exact same thing. I just do some sort of prefix in this case maybe staging two as a prefix something along those lines and then you can also choose the profile image size for the plugin typically i recommend just using original under the buttons option you're able to change the text of the button so you can change what it says to from continue with twitter as the login and so on and so forth you can even use to choose to use a custom button which you will need to insert the svg code here and the styling the synced data option is really interesting, but you cannot do it on the free version, so we will not be discussing it. The usage is the integration. So if you are a theme developer, you're able to integrate the button on the front end of the website by using a shortcode embed, and you can even change how the social login button works by setting a redirect URL, as it mentions here. This is really good if you ha are an active theme developer or you're just a developer who's looking to integrate a social login system. We're going to look at the Facebook settings. I've already gone ahead and set up Facebook just as an example, and there is a video on that as well. You can do the same thing and set the prefix on register or the fallback username prefix on register. And then you get to change your buttons the buttons right here you can change the button type and the account text here sync data again is locked behind a paywall and then the usage is the exact same as the twitter button and so on and so forth one interesting thing that you get is access to global settings this is where all the good stuff is under global settings you can enable a debug tool which can help you when you have a login flow issue so even if you have an app set up, for instance, many times the app may reject it, and this can help you understand why the login or the registration is being rejected. Oftentimes it's because the API version might be out of date, and this can help you a lot. I've come across sites all the time where it was something as simple as, oh, the version that they have for the Facebook API is way out of date. So it just needs to be updated and the issue is resolved. I don't recommend enabling this option though for all times. Keep it disabled and only enable it when you need to. Otherwise you can have all sorts of finicky issues. Page for register flow. So what this does is if a user logs in with say Twitter and they don't have all the information, some social networks don't provide you all the necessary information for WordPress to create a user account. I think one of the most obvious ones is Twitter. I don't believe Twitter will send you the user's email address. And so you have to then set up a page that they can request uh, where you can request the rest of the data to get logged in. So 
what you need to do is take the next end social login register flow and embed it on a page and then provide them the URL here for the for your page and then also make sure that your users are being disclosed what this information is being used for. As it mentions here, if you're going to request additional information, you should get display terms and conditions. I agree with this. Part of the issue with when you're working with some of these platforms is, is they don't provide you a lot of useful information, which you're going to have to request. And if you're not telling users why you're requesting additional information after they just logged in, it can cause some problems. Additionally, you have the OAuth redirect URL proxy page. So when you can use this when your when wp-login.php is not available to handle an OAuth flow and OAuth flow is basically where the OAuth API that you're trying to speak to will not let this page be where you're redirecting users to so you can create a new page and select the page here more or less this plugin doesn't really need you to do this because it has a really smart way of handling this out of the box but it's an option here as it says important you won't be able to reach a selected page unless a social login or registration happens and you need to create a new page to select this page above you really don't need to worry too much about this option you then have the prevent external redirect overrides external redirects are when in the oauth api or the settings of that api where you have you can set up a redirect rule uh, Facebook, I believe, has in its app developer settings the ability for you to declare a redirect URL or at least URLs that can be redirected to. A lot of apps may force you to be redirected to the page that you were on. This can just prevent you from being forced redirected from externals. The, you can also then select the default redirect URL as for login and you can declare where they're being sent upon login. Now, this can be useful. So if, say you're using WooCommerce. Well, you can put the my account URL as this URL because on login, every WooCommerce user is going to go to my account and that's going to be dynamic for every user. So it's not like they're having a specific URL to, that's given to them. You can also do this if you're on a membership site by redirecting them to a hidden page or a page that has all the content that you're wanting to show to them. And this is very useful. The exact same thing for registration. And then you can do a fixed redirect URL. A fixed re redirect URL is where everything is going. So the default redirect URL is where it goes if nothing is declared. A fixed redirect URL is where it's always going to send users if they log in or are registered and then they get sent to that page after getting signed in. Blacklisted redirects if you, allows you to blacklist redirect URL parameters. I'm not going to play around too much with this option because it's fairly advanced and you really don't need it for most use cases. You then have the ability to support login restrictions. So as they mention here a, uh, for the login restriction, it prevents the login by using only WordPress filters, authenticate or WP authenticate. So... <clears throat> What this will do is it'll no longer allow users to log in with their social accounts if the registration on the website is flagged for admin approval or email verification. Basically, this just works with other plugins. Theme by Login and Ultimate Members seem to be the only ones supported. It basically allows them to, it's a workaround to prevent users from just signing in with your, with their Facebook or their Twitter or their Google to get around the authentication that you might require on various plugins. More plugins should honestly support this because there's no reason to bake every membership plugin with some sort of Facebook login functionality when it's just easier to integrate with a plugin that is specifically for social login. You should enable this option if you use Ultimate Member or Theme My Login or New User Approve or apparently WooCommerce User Email Verification. If the plugin appears on this list, then you should by all means enable the option. That way you can still approve and micromanage users as you expect. You then have the ability to display avatars in all media items. So basically what this does is it can 
it says enabling this option can speed up loading images in the media library grid view. But as it says, it'll display the avatars in the all media items. So I had signed in with my Facebook profile. And as you can see, the URL was the image that was my Facebook profile was downloaded and is now being served from my local media library. And I can also see it. So then I can also add alt attributes and other information or delete it which you probably shouldn't do, but it's there as an option. And then you have membership. So membership, as it mentions, WordPress default enabled or disabled, allow registration with social login. You, you can you could use this to override how WordPress registration rules work. If you have under the general settings, user, user registration disabled, you can override that using the social login plugin that way what happens is that users are required to register using the social login, which I think is really smart. One of the most common things that you'll notice with spam users is they tend to just fill out the fields. You can't really fill out the fields for a login through Facebook. They have to have a Facebook account. So you can use this as a means of spam reduction by not by forcing users to log in via a social media account instead of signing up for their email address. However, the contrary to that is users may very well just not sign up at all because some users are very hesitant to sign in with Facebook. There is a lack of education among many general users that when you sign in with Facebook that you're not giving away all your Facebook profile information to the website that they're signing into. In fact, from the developer side, you basically get little to no information, which is totally acceptable, and that's how it should be. But there's no clear guidance given to the user on what information is actually given and that they can have access to. And they can also decline what they're given. But again, it's about educating the user, which that can be tricky. Then we have the privacy section. So the privacy section allows you, number one, you should enable a terms and conditions always you should always be upfront about what information you're collecting and why you're allowing them to sign in via social media it should be declared and spelled out in either your privacy policy or your terms and conditions then you can choose what information to store the first and last name if there is no first and last name they'll take the username or it can be randomly generated Email would not enable the email will be empty. So the email should be should be collected. Avatar. Avatar should be downloaded for most use cases, in my opinion. And then the access token, these should all be collected. This is what I think of as the bare minimum. If you are having users just log in for say your membership website and they have no profiles and they don't really have any means of really accessing the website to speak with somebody else, then I would disable the avatar setting. But I think collecting the first name, the last name, and the email address is totally acceptable. It's 2020. You're not asking for, you're not collecting IP addresses and fiddling around with their accounts. You're just collecting information to identify them, which most users I feel would be totally fine with. And then there is the login form settings. Login form settings allow you to modify how the buttons are displayed on the front end. So as it mentions, the login form, you can choose to show the login buttons or hide the login buttons. This is for the default wp-login.php. It also works with any plugin that effectively embeds the WP login form, which it mentions right here. So I recommend showing it for the login and registration so long as you're wanting users to be able to log in or register with both. If you want to force users to register with their email address and then log in but then also allow them to log in via social media. Then you can choose to hide the login buttons, but that's that's quite silly. I just leave all these basically as default. The only thing I do typically change is my button alignment, and I typically set this to center because in most themes and setups, it's just nicer. It looks better in my opinion, and it's fairly straightforward. And then everything else in the plugin is pretty much locked behind a paywall. You do get some cool features, um, specifically the icon style as opposed to the default long style buttons. And you can change the layouts of everything and it looks really good. And unfortunately, it's not included in the free version. 
But in the coming videos, I will show you how to set up the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Google logins for this plugin. If you have any questions or some suggestions for another plugin for me to cover, please ask in the comments section below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.